this is the iPhone 6s and I use this as my only phone for an entire week. This is what I think about it. Before I talk about how it is to use as a phone, let me give you a small refresher on the iPhone 6s. This is Apple's best from 2015. It has all the bells and whistles you would expect from a 2015 phone. But what sets it apart compared to a phone from 2015 again is its software support. This thing runs iOS 15. Sure, not the latest or greatest, but it still runs modern software. This is a 7 year old phone, keep that in mind. It got 7 years of software support. There's literally no other phone out there that will get this level of software support like the iPhone 6s unless Apple beats their own record and supports the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10s for longer I hope they beat their record okay so for this video to go on I have to make sure that the phone has all the essential things I need on a phone so I thought it'll be fun if I show you guys how I set up a phone like this iPhone right now from scratch I do need some apps specifically a few important ones like notion a few social media apps so that people can actually contact me and a few banking apps so that I can pay for services. I feel like that's the most important thing I need a phone for. Next, I had to log into all my accounts to get things in sync and we're good to go, I guess, with this iPhone. To no one's surprise, the setup process was rather easy since it runs iOS 15, but it did run into one small problem. You see, this iPhone is a 16 gigabyte iPhone 6S and I already filled up most of the storage by downloading the apps. I'm wondering how I'm gonna last the entire week using this phone. I take a lot of photos. The first thing that strikes me the most is this design. I kind of forgot how it is to use a phone of this size. This was a big iPhone back in 2015, but now compared to the likes of the iPhone 13 Pro, this is pretty small and very compact. Just like other iPhones, it's built really well. It feels really premium in the hand. And I love this color. Rose gold is the best iPhone color ever. Pacific blue comes second to it. But this small form factor was not the only reason. The phone is really thin. This phone is from an era where phones were really on the race to becoming the thinnest, but there was a problem. What's up guys, Lou here back with another video and today we're gonna be doing the official iPhone 6 Plus bend test. Bend gate, which the iPhone 6 did suffer from, was mainly because of how the phone is extremely thin and built poorly. The iPhone 6s does not face the same issue simply because it was a bit thicker and had stronger materials in comparison to the iPhone 6. Apple did a lot of things to make sure that the iPhone 6s did not bend as easily as the iPhone well, 6. The same. This is an entirely new aluminum. But looking at this now next to say the iPhone 13, this is really thin. Nowadays, phone manufacturers are on the race to making their phones thicker to fit in more cameras and bigger batteries. A good change, I guess? Not really, I still love this small, thin form factor of the iPhone 6s. This thick bezel and home button combo is very dated. It is 8 years old at this point. The current SE still has this design. But wanna exit an app quickly, just press the home button. And unlike the iPhone 7 or the new iPhone SE, this button does click. It isn't powered by haptics and it feels really satisfying to use. The Touch ID sensor is amazing. It is fast and I loved using it way more than Face ID. It's right there and it works every single time unlike Face ID. The display is not bad. Sure, it's no OLED but it's still good to look at. The only problem is it does not get that bright outdoors, which is annoying sometimes. Now that I got those out of the way, how it has been to use as a phone? Well, the experience has been quite good. You can do all of the basic phone things without any issues. You can call people, listen to music, text, browse the internet. Everything is fine on the iPhone 6s, except for the battery life, which I'll get to in a minute. Speaking of listening to music, this thing has a headphone jack. How cool is that? I wish the phone lasted for a whole day though. The whole week I used it, I charged the phone three to four times a day. It would just last me two hours and that's on light use, mind you. Which is listening to music or just browsing. I wouldn't expect it to last more than an hour with multiple apps in the background and streaming 1080p videos on YouTube. The battery health is horrendous. It's at its 70s. I literally carried a power bank everywhere I went. I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Or maybe a fresh battery might help, but it is bad nonetheless. Another thing that I quickly noticed which also became an annoying point for the week were the speakers. It's not that great. It's a mono speaker which is fine, but every time I have to listen to something, I have to cup the speaker so that I can hear things. I gave up doing that and I eventually started just using AirPods to listen to music because 
why not what about the performance compared to a newer iphone this is obviously very slow youtube would take a while to load instagram would often not load a few elements or straight up crash or even websites would take a long while to load the point is it is slow but not for a drastic amount that you would be affected by it every single time many common tasks still run fine the phone is not unusable other than that ios 15 flies on this iphone 6 as sure it's not a smooth experience every single time it also doesn't support all of the cool new features with ios 15 like live text or offline siri but it has all the core features of ios 15 and that's all you need to use a phone it works well in the apple ecosystem i use a mac i use an apple watch and they all work perfectly fine with the iphone 6s it gets the job done remember we are talking about a seven year old phone and it runs pretty smooth for what it's worth this impressed me the most about the iphone 6s even if you take a phone from 2015 things won't be as good as it is with the iphone 6s a sub to this channel would be splendid we are very close to hitting 3k by the end of this year so go do that right now but there is something that this iphone has that newer iphones no longer have and that is 3d touch 3D touch was a feature that allowed the screen to recognize multiple levels of pressure. Say you are force pressing an icon, it will detect the pressure and respond with quick actions. But it's not just that, you could jump to the app switcher by force pressing the left edge. You could force touch anywhere on the keyboard to quickly use it as a trackpad. I even remember there was an app that allowed you to weigh things using your iPhone. Right now, it exists on a virtual form on newer iPhones known as Haptic Touch. It does most of the same things 3D Touch does, but it doesn't feel the same and those actions you could do with 3D Touch are not there or just slower over here. Remember I talked about the keyboard being a trackpad? Well, in order for you to use that now on Haptic Touch, you have to long press the spacebar. It just feels weird and out of place without 3D Touch. Here, take a look at a few actions with 3D Touch and without it. Things just feel a bit slower on Haptic Touch. And the way it responds to the pressure you apply with 3D Touch is simply amazing. I miss 3D Touch a lot. I feel like it was one of the most underrated features that an iPhone had. It just made the experience of using the iPhone way more intuitive and faster. Finally, let's talk about the camera. Right now, I am shooting this part of the video on the iPhone 6s, so you can be the judge about the quality. The iPhone 6s was the first iPhone to get a 12 megapixel camera. This one in particular has a f2.2 aperture and no OIS. The bigger 6s Plus had OIS. The front has a 5 megapixel camera and the same f2.2 aperture. A lot of the features that we currently have were first introduced with the iPhone 6s. This was the first one with live photos. It was the first one to bring Retina Flash. It was also the first iPhone that could record in 4K. And only recently, the iPhone got a bump up to 48 megapixels. It took Apple 7 years to make a meaningful jump up to megapixels. But how does this camera stack up? Well, the photos are good. The photos have a very unprocessed look, which I like a lot. It's not the best in reproducing HDR, but it does what it can to retain highlights and shadows. As it gets darker, the photos do get really noisy since the aperture is small and there is no OIS. The front camera held up pretty good. I prefer this unprocessed look in comparison to newer iPhones. And the video is fine. Sure, it's not as good as this iPhone 13 Pro, but it does shoot good quality 4K videos and you can actually get some good clips with it. Before I end this video, I do have a few nitpicks about the iPhone 6s. The network reception was bad. I got no service in many spots and the data speeds were slow. And remember the storage? Yeah, I filled up most of it. I only have like 500 MB left on this phone. Very nice. But other than that, I think I've covered what I've felt about the iPhone 6s for the entire week and I feel like you can use this as a phone in 2023. If you're looking into using an older iPhone or even buying one, this or even the iPhone 7 are great options. And yeah, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. This is Thank You, and I'll see you guys in the very next one. Peace.